I want to take some time to talk about City Councilwoman Shama Sawan of Seattle's 3rd District because this is an individual who is so crucial to the labor movement and she is one of, if not the most effective local politicians in America because she has managed to accomplish what Bernie Sanders says he wants to do, albeit at a local level. So Bernie Sanders talks about wanting to be the organizer in chief. Well, she's replicated that strategy at the local level. She has rallied the grassroots in Seattle to take on big business, and guess what? She's really effective. She led the charge for a $15 an hour minimum wage, and now cities across the country are following her lead because she pushed Seattle to do that. She's also fighting for a local Green New Deal. On top of that, she's fighting for public municipal broadband. This is someone who is incredibly effective, and since she's so effective, she has become a target of big business like Amazon. Now, I want to share and now this video with you because she explains the situation and this video is more concise and kind of gives you a really big breakdown than what I can give you. So watch this and then we will explain the results of her election that took place on November 5th. And this is part of Gentrification Central. We're standing in the middle of Amazon campus right in front of the Amazon spheres, otherwise colloquially known in, our, in my city as Jeff Bezos's balls. Jeff Bezos and his fellow billionaires have gone to war in this city and in this year's city council elections they are attempting to straight up buy their candidates and do a hostile corporate takeover of city hall. Seattle is a test lab. If they do this in Seattle they're going to come after other cities. Seattle is in many ways a microcosm of what's happening in metropolitan areas throughout the nation and the national political situation in general. It is an extremely wealthy city, one of the wealthiest cities in the history of humanity, and yet we have the nation's most regressive tax system. And in the same period that construction has boomed and has made untold millions for property management corporations, the venture capitalists, the big banks, more billionaires and billionaires have been created. In that same period, we are seeing devastating inequality, an explosion in the homelessness crisis, and affordable housing that is at such severe shortage that even the middle class is experiencing an epidemic of economic evictions. And that is why, uh, you know, what happens in Seattle matters to working people and those of us who want social justice in every city throughout the nation. Whenever movements led by working people, ordinary people who are struggling to survive in our uh, cities where inequality is growing rapidly, the Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times, all the political pundits that represent the interests of the billionaire class, they say, oh well, aren't you against jobs? Aren't socialists against jobs? And I think it's important for us to point out that we refuse to accept a system where the only terms on which some of us get decent jobs is on terms of allowing every city in every world to be a race to the bottom for most of us. Refusing to accept this race to the bottom is critical. The lessons of the $15 minimum wage show that actually it's the opposite of what the Wall Street Journal will tell you. It's when working people get organized, collectively develop a political analysis and start fighting back, build movements to win victories that are wrested from the hands of the billionaires, not out of their kind hearts, not given to us out of their kind hearts. That's when we are able to win progressive victories like wage increases, like rent control, not just in one city, but in city after city. It's because the uh, confidence that we gain from winning in one city, it goes into other cities and other cities and yet other cities. Now, it's not just Amazon. I need you to understand what's been happening in Seattle. Whenever she proposes a policy and starts pushing for something, that's when big business starts spending big money. 
And they are pretty brazen about that. So, of course, we saw what Amazon did once the Seattle City Council passed a head tax in order to stop homelessness. They got the City Council to backtrack. And on top of that, she proposes public municipal broadband, Comcast, and CenturyLink start pouring money in. She proposes rent control, then realtors pour thousands of dollars into the city to stop that. She proposes a local Green New Deal. Puget Sound Energy spends thousands to defeat it. The reason why they're spending so much time, energy, and money trying to stop her agenda is because they know that she poses a real threat. Because when you have the people behind you... You can actually accomplish really amazing things, and she's evidence that that is in fact the case. So she's someone who's incredibly important, right? She may be in Seattle, but she is proving that Bernie's organizer-in-chief strategy is absolutely viable. So if we want things like Medicare for All, even if we don't get money out of politics, even if we don't defeat capitalism, we can still do that so long as we have individuals on the ground fighting for it. Because like any good politician, like any organizer, you know that real change comes from the bottom up, not the top down. So she is using the grassroots to push through an agenda that the people of Seattle desperately want and need. So companies like Amazon, they're not just spending a lot of money to defeat any initiative she's fighting for. They spent a lot of money trying to defeat her, as the Now This video uh, explained. And unfortunately for them, it seems like they might actually get what they want. Because as Owen Higgins of Common Dreams reports, socialist counselor Shama Sawant, one of the company's top targets, told The Guardian that her race had been uphill and that the power of a massive corporation like Amazon stacked against her campaign had been difficult to overcome. We have run a historic grassroots campaign with working people, community members, rejecting Amazon and billionaires' attempts to buy this election, and that doesn't mean we're going to win every battle against the billionaires, said Sawant. What matters is the political clarity that the billionaires are not on our side and that this is going to be a struggle. Seattle is still waiting for the final results in the race. Washington has a mail-in voting system that makes final counts unavailable for days after voting, but as of Wednesday, it looked likely that Sawant and fellow socialist Sean Scott were headed for defeat against Amazon-backed candidates like Egan Orion and Alex Peterson, respectively. Neither Scott nor Sawant had conceded at press time. Now, at the time I'm recording this video, it still doesn't look good, but it's not over yet. And as Sarah Jaffe, a journalist, points out, let's remember that mail-in voting in Washington state means Shama Sawant's race is not over. Yes, she's trailing. Yes, it's because of Amazon money and frankly, because some comfortable liberals find her too radical. But let's not write her off yet. So it's not over until it's over, but the reason why I'm talking about this is because this is an incredibly important race. If she's able to defeat Amazon in spite of all of the money that they're spending to defeat her and her agenda, that really demonstrates how powerful labor and organized grassroots movements are and it will reflect what we're able to accomplish at the national level. So we all have a vested interest in making sure that she is successful. But let me just say something. In the event she loses, we don't know that that's going to be the case, but if she actually does lose to the corporate shill that was running against her, then this is not the end of Shama Sawant, by no means. Um, this is a defeat in one battle, but rather than trying to defeat Councilwoman Sawant, Amazon's going to have to defeat Representative Sawant or Senator Sawant because she's not going anywhere. So this is an incredibly important race that I want you to pay close attention to. And I tried to bring Shama on my show last week. Unfortunately, um, she had a budget meeting that ran over, so that didn't pan out well. But I do want to bring her on in the future because I think she is such a fantastic resource for just telling us what we need to do to affect change. But I will encourage you to watch an interview that she did with Michael Brooks because she breaks it down you know, what's at stake and how you can win against large multinational corporations that are trying to defeat you. And shout out to Michael Brooks, by the way, who actually put me in contact with her team um, because I've followed Shama's career now for quite some time and she really is the real deal. So if you haven't heard about her, then um, change that and understand that real change is possible because this individual in one city has proven that that's the case. It's certainly not easy to affect change, but she demonstrated that it's possible, and she basically showed us what you need to do 
to make that change happen. You rally the people and she understands that and anyone who's a true leader who understands what we need to do to accomplish change in this country understands that as well.